As we know, modern sailboats use sails for power and locomotion to go. The sails on most modern sailboats are triangle shaped nowadays. A triangle has three edges and three corners. It's important for us to know the technical terms for these so we can communicate effectively. So we're going to do a review. This is your test. What is the name of this edge? Leech. What is the name of this edge? Luff. The name of this edge? Foot. The name of this corner? Head. Name of this corner? Deck. Name of this corner? Clue. Perfect. Okay, you're getting the language very well. For me to take a novice sailor, a complete stranger, and work together as a team, the very first thing I have to do is give them the fundamentals. We need to be able to speak the same technical sailor language. So, on a sailboat, we need to be able to communicate using the technical language about the different parts of the sailboat. So what is the main body of the boat called? It's a hull. And what do we call the big heavy weight down below? The keel. And the steering stick in the back, in the water? It's a rudder. Okay, we have a big stick going up into the sky. That's a mast. And there's a stick pointing towards the, the back. It's a boom. It's a boom. The front of a sailboat, we never say front, we say? Bow. And what do we say about the back? We don't say back. We say stern. The area in the back with the seats where we sit is called the? Cockpit. And the top part that we can walk on is called the? Deck. Perfect. It is important to me that I give my new baby crew a proper sailing foundation to grow from. So, when we are sailing on the ocean and we're in anchorages, the most common type of sailboat that we're going to find is like Wild Child. We have one mast and one front sail. And what do we call this type of boat? It's a sloop rig. Okay. Sometimes we might find sailboats with two masts and the back mast is shorter than the front mast. What do we call that type of sailboat? It's a catch rig. Now there's an older version of this kind of boat that has two masts and looks like a catch but it's slightly different because the back mast is behind the rudder and the back boom sticks out the back of the boat. What do we call this? It's a yaw rig. <clears throat> now we might find in bigger boats or older boats we might find two masts or three masts and now the back mast is the tall mast and the short mast is the front mast. What type of vessel is this? It's a schooner rig. Excellent. So, we might find any of those types or configurations of boats could have two front sails on them. So if they have two front sails, we call it a cutter rig. So in, the, in this example, if we have Wild Child with one mast and two front sails, we would say she is a cutter rigged sloop. Now there's other types of boats that we can cut a rig. What is this? It's a cutter rigged catch. Because? It has two uh, lines for sails. Two front sails and the two masts and the back mast is shorter. Now there's a type of sailboat out here very popular with the old people that's like a floating condominium. But it is a terrible, terrible sailing vessel. And Captain Lexi really dislikes them because they're not real sailboats and not real sailors love to buy them. They have two pontoons and one mast and they are called a yucky yucky cat. So yucky yucky catamarans. Yuck! We don't like catamarans. <laughs> I think it's funny that I properly prejudiced my students from the beginning. Which we can do easy. easy. The next type of knot that we learn to tie is the figure eight knot, which we remember we've been learning. Beautiful. Now sometimes we might want to make a loop that we can throw over a post mm -hmm. or a cleat mm -hmm. so we can do the loop back half knot. And this gives us a loop that we can throw over an end. When I get absolute novice rookie sailors that literally know nothing, uh, it takes me an intense week to combine the classroom theory with the hands-on uh, practical work bow, to get their bow, skill bow, level up to be able to be a basic, you know, shirt, competent crew. Uh, okay. Tie a uh, bowline around my arm. Just a second. Uh, so this uh, is the uh, yeah, working yeah. end. I know, I know. Uh, just a second. Um.
My crew Ivan has been on Wild Child now for more than a week, so we're done all the classroom theory part of the training. He has a very good foundation for his sailing education. The next part is for us just to go sailing and for him to practice the new skills that he's learned. For the last week to 10 days on Wild Child, it's been all work. But we're going to reward ourselves now, and I'm going to bring you guys along with the little blue camera, and we're going to take you snorkeling with us. Come explore. It's not all suffering. There is play involved in the sailing life. Hey, Ivan. Want to come snorkeling with me? Let's go snorkeling. Let's go snorkeling. <laughs> My life is so much easier when I have crew to help me with things like this. See, if you did a good coil, it wouldn't be dangerous. So this is why we have to learn to coil the ropes nicely. So that, like this, like a little bit loose. Everybody ready? Let's go snorkeling! Yay! Snorkeling! Yay! I find exploring the underwater world interesting every single time. There's so much variety of life in the ocean. It's endlessly fascinating and endlessly in motion. Look, I found another one of Neptune's crystal balls. I think these things are fascinating. I found a conch shell, and I want to see if anybody's home. Look, there he is. You can see him inside. He's peering out at us with his beady little conch eyes. Look, I found another conch shell. Let's see if this guy's home. Eating conch is a local delicacy, so usually the locals will clear out, kill, remove, and destroy all conch on all of the reefs. But it seems that Calvany Island is protecting Calvany Reef, and we can actually find live conch. Look at the cute little guy staring us down. We'll set him back. I had noticed today while I was snorkeling that I was getting a lot of water into my mask. I thought it was unusual. So I surfaced and came back to the dinghy and I noticed much to my dismay that my pink mask is now cracked. It's damaged. The plastic is beginning to fail. It's so depressing. How am I going to find another pink mask out here? See how I 
Well, we just got back from a lovely afternoon of snorkeling, and as you guys saw, I also discovered that my beautiful pink swimming mask is broken, which is rather depressing. And now, of course, after snorkeling, I'm all covered in salt water, and when you let salt water dry on your skin, it gets itchy, so it's time for a cockpit shower. You guys want to come? Yeah, just kidding. <laughs>